Thank you and welcome to this short presentation. I'm going to show you six things that you can do for severe headache. My name is Rayburn Forbes. I'm a practicing consultant neurologist and I help family doctors look after people with severe headaches. The most important single thing under your control is to stop overusing painkillers. This page will show you how to measure the amount of painkillers you're using and if you're taking too many, you must stop them. If your previous headache type was migraine, this approach can be over 75% effective within a matter of weeks. Next, you want to look at your lifestyle. I've coined the phrase a headache-friendly lifestyle. This includes drinking water, avoiding hunger, gentle amounts of exercise, and looking at your sleep patterns. This is a positive thing that you can do to reduce the amount of headache you get, as well as just making yourself feel better in general. You can read more here. Next, if you're going to use medicines effectively, you need to understand that medicines for headaches come in two different types. First, you've got headache prophylaxis. This means medicines that you take every day for two or three months to try and prevent headaches. The most common mistake is to give up too soon. Second, if you're prone to attacks of severe headaches such as a migraine attack, you need to have a plan of action to follow. If you stick to this plan, you're more likely to succeed. The website will show you how to draw up an acute headache rescue plan, which might require the help of your doctor as often prescription medicines are required. Drug-free treatments are often overlooked. Sometimes people get concerned that this is quackery rather than science. However, many different types of treatment have been studied properly. These include physiotherapy, some types of vitamins or herbal treatments, and the long-forgotten biofeedback for pain. These are all options and might help you feel more in control. You must understand that chronic headache is different. In an acute pain such as the pain from an injury, you're getting an alarm signal to tell you that you are in danger. In chronic pain such as a chronic headache, you get the alarm signal but you're not in danger. You must understand that chronic headache is like a false alarm. If you can understand this, you will feel less threatened, less anxious, and the intensity of pain will diminish. You can read a bit more about this here. Lastly, you must challenge your thinking and emotions. This can be very hard to do, especially if you've had a long history of headaches and nothing seems to work. Many people with long-term pain find themselves trapped by the pain. They feel there is no way out and worry that if pain worsens, they will not be able to cope at all. This negative spiral of thinking is called pain catastrophization. This is a fancy word, but it's actually quite an easy concept to understand. There's a questionnaire on this page that will tell you whether this type of negative thinking is a problem for you and it will also give you some pointers to get out of this way of thinking. You should also screen yourself for anxiety and depression because if anxiety or depression or both are present they will tend to make pain feel worse and yet anxiety and depression are treatable. Why not take the questionnaires on these pages? Please remember that this website and this instructional video is not a substitute for proper medical care but is designed to be used alongside what your own doctor is telling you. Nonetheless, I hope you find the information helpful. If you follow these six steps, there's a high chance that you will reduce the amount of pain you experience. My own estimate would be that 50 to 75% of people who follow this advice will reduce their pain levels. If you're not sure what to do next, why not measure your headache? On this page is a copy of the Headache Impact Test. If you score 56 or above on this test, 
it is highly likely that this website contains information that will be useful for you. You can also sign up for a monthly newsletter or look for postings on Google Plus or Facebook.